Hi, this is Fern G. Zadkar, website www.ferngzadkar.com. Welcome to my Facebook Live reading, Supernatural Wordplay. Part 3, Question and Answer. Now I'm going to attempt to do this. Like I said, this is my first time on uh, Facebook Live. And my laptop has kind of a slippery pad here, so I hope I don't accidentally end up going off live feed. But I'll do my best to see now uh, this column to see if anybody has any questions for me. And thank you for <laughs> thank you for your encouragement and the lovely comments here. I do appreciate that very much. So. Um, Basically, you know, if you do have anything that you want to ask me, um, just, you know, type it up and you can. I know sometimes when I'm doing, um, well, when I'm doing readings in person, of course, it sometimes takes a while for people to think of things that they would like to ask. Uh, I always make jokes like you can ask me anything, but just don't ask me my age or my weight. And then, of course, somebody inevitably goes and does that. So <laughs> it's just... Um, it's just a little bit uh, of fun. Uh, sometimes people ask me, I, I think that I basically uh, gave the information in terms of where you can learn more about my poetry. Um, let's see what else people generally ask. They sometimes ask about um, the in inspiration for, for my work. Um, so, so that's uh, that's something that um, I would say that what generally happens is it, it's very much situational. I sometimes see articles in the paper or items on the news, and um, and what happens is that I'm just compelled to write a poem about it because they do affect me so much. Um, other times, well, what I do too is I keep a journal of ideas for my poetry. And if I think of something, you know, the time isn't always necessarily right to write a poem. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, you know, I'll, I'll write it in my journal. And I've got several pages of ideas. And then I will write a poem afterwards when I feel like doing so. Um, other questions people ask basically when I got started, things like that. I've been doing this now for, I would say, about over 20 years, actually. Um, but it's always very, very different. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Um, that, that's really nice of you. Can, but Bonnie asks, can we expect another book to be published anytime soon? Um, it's it's a possibility. I don't know about any time soon. Actually, right now what I'm doing is I've been taking Mandarin lessons for a while. So I've been writing poetry in Mandarin and uh, that's quite the task. It's um, I'm, I'm lucky I have a wonderful Mandarin teacher, uh, but it's it's something that's quite time consuming. So that's one of my projects right now. And of course, my YouTube channel is my main go to project. Uh, as I said, I have about, I'm not sure how many are posted now, but I think I've made close to a hundred poetry videos and I'm currently working on expanding the, the different poetry topics. I also should mention that um, one of the topics that I have for those videos is I've got, um, I've got uh, free lesson plans and study guides for teachers and parents who homeschool their children. So that's something that, like I say, they're, they're free of charge. I, I would hope that people make use of them. I've um, contacted the school district here and I've offered them and I've also offered them to various other places online. So it, it's just a way of being able to use my craft to help help other people. And um, so there's that. So thank you very much. Oh, and Shirley asks, um, has the pandemic inspired some poetry? And actually it has. Um, 
although I tried not to fixate on it too terribly much uh, because like everybody else, you know, the, the pandemic is sort of a depressing topic to say the least, but uh, I did write a poem and again, I guess this is just my penchant for the supernatural, but kind of ties into where someone that starts to become, she's watering her plants, as you can see, I, I like plants, uh, starts to water her plants and she's alone and she can't really contact, be in contact very much with society and she starts befriending her plants, but then there's a little twist. It's, you'll see when it gets published, if it gets published, but it's, it, it turns a little bit strange actually. And Lisa, thank you. I see that you've joined in and I really appreciate your compliment about the contrast in the last poem. Uh, that one, like I say, some of these poems you see when I do wordplay, it's a little bit trickier to read these aloud because they really do lend themselves more to the printed page. But um, I, I kind of picked the ones where I thought that, uh, you know, you'd get the gist. Oh, and Shirley, thank you for <laughs> liking my plans. Matthew, let's see. Oh, thank you. He says, what made you finally decide to write your book, Shards of Crystal, after hundreds of excellent publications to journals, and including those orbiting the planet Mars? Thank you. Um, you know, I, I decided that rightfully or wrongfully, so I wasn't sure, I wanted to establish uh, more of a worldwide reputation as opposed to just fixating on one thing in one country. Now, I know that's a very unorthodox approach, but because I have been published all over, you know, like if off, off the coast of Africa, um, in Nepal, in Finland, and just, just all over the place. Some places actually where I quite honestly had to look them up on a map. I didn't even know where they were. So I, I really focused on that and getting my work out there. And I'm glad I did that because um, I guess it, it made me, well, it, it allowed me to get to know a lot of people all over the world and make friends with editors in France, editors, I, an editor in Peru who I'm friendly with, you know, editors in Italy. So I really enjoyed that. And then I decided, you know what, I better, I have all these poems and I should put a, a collection together and I was very fortunate to um, to have Candace James from Silver Bow Publishing pick up my book and um, publish it. I'm very grateful for that. Now Lisa asks, um, thank you, she says, wonderful to hear you read your poems. Do you find it difficult to translate? And that is such an excellent question, Lisa. I really do appreciate that. Um, what I do is when I'm writing a poem and I want to write it in another language because like I say, I do write poems in six different languages. Um, so far I've had five of the languages uh, published, you know, like in the original, I'm working on getting my Mandarin poetry published, but I, I prefer to write them in the original language first. I find that that's very important because they're just different nuances of phrase and the syntax, it just, I find that literary translation, I have to say, is a real skill. And it's, it's much better if you can write from the heart in the original language. Although I do translate them, and sometimes like what I do just to mix things up for myself and have fun, I'll write a line in one language and then in another language, and then I'll have an English line or I'll do, I've had some stuff published. I had something published in Spain where it was um, in three columns, so it was trilingual side by side of uh, poetry. And so one column was Spanish, one column was French, one column was English, but it was all the same poem. So it just depends on what I feel like doing. But, but my advice would be for anyone who wants to write in another language to be absolutely sure, in my humble opinion, to, to write in that language first, translate later. And even, you know, I, I've done translations for people, like both literary translations, jurid, juridical translations, that type of thing, uh, like legal translations. And I find that it's always best to translate into your mother tongue as well, if you can. It's just, it's natural, you know. Now, I see that we're 
pretty much at the end. Um, I don't think I see any more questions. So I would really like to thank everyone for attending and for their participation. It's very, very much appreciated. And as I say, if you're so inclined, I've got three more readings to go. So next week's readings, as I said, next week's themes are going to be war and astronomy. So thank you ever so much. This is Fern G. Z. Carr saying goodbye, and I really do appreciate your having tuned in. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Acknowledgements. Part 3 is an excerpt from the original full video, which was kindly sponsored by the League of Canadian Poets and the Canada Council for the Arts. Thanks very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like and please be sure to subscribe. For more poetry, my book Shards of Crystal is available on Amazon. Thanks again and stay tuned for a new video every Wednesday.